Hello friends! Today we're going to be discussing a very important topic and that is dark academia. <laughs> I like to think of myself as an authority on dark academia. I have read so much dark academia in my life. It's actually ridiculous. Every time there's a dark academia list, I've read pretty much all of them. And so I wanted to make a definitive list of my top recommendations. This isn't every dark academia book I've ever read. This is just the ones I think are the best. Everything on this list is either like a high four or above. So everything here is a four or five star for me. And they're all, I think, great recommendations that hit on different areas of dark academia. I'm also very picky on what constitutes dark academia. It's not a term to be thrown about willy nilly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but it's not funny. <laughs> At the end of the day, is it? It's serious. A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series, for example, takes place with a character who's at school and it's got murder, not dark academia. Vicious. I see Vicious by V.E. Schwab on some dark academia list. I don't think it has dark academia vibes. Dark academia is a moment. It's an essence. It's like this intangible feeling that you can't just, you can't assign to anything. So I've also given them all names. Don't ask me why, I've just done it. Like, you know, the something. They're all the something in this video. So shall we just get through my recommendations? These aren't in any particular order. I've tried to like variate the types of dark academia we've got going on. Shall we just get into it? First we have got the classic. This is the number one. This is the banker. This is the one that never loses. This was the no brainer. This was the banker. This was the one that couldn't fail. This was one that's never failed. The first one is The Secret History by Donna Tartt. If you like dark academia, you're looking to get into more dark academia. If you haven't read this yet, do it. If you don't know my personal story of this book is I went through a couple years, I'd say three or four years from when I was like, 15 to like 18, 19, where I stopped reading. I like read one book in that time, <laughs> I was not reading. And then I read this book and it changed everything for me. I read maybe 10, I was starting to get back into reading. I think I'd read 10 to 15 books the year before. And then this was my first book of the year, I wanna say in 2019. Is that correct? <laughs> I don't know. And I went on to read 80 books that year, which I don't think I've ever done in my life. And this really made me fall back in love with reading. So if you haven't read this, we're following um, this group of characters and they're very fucked up and messy. So you know that one of the um, main characters, one of the main friends is dead. He's dead, girl. He's dead. <laughs> and then we go back through the story of their meeting and their relationships. It's very slow. It's like dense. It's strange. It's, oh, I love the secret history, but I am tentative to ever reread it because I'm so scared it wouldn't match up to it for me. But I think this is like the OG dark academia. Like it's perfect. It's got those pretentious characters. Like you need some pretentious characters when it comes to dark academia. You've got like weird professors. You've got like people so obsessed with academia and learning and like the art of learning and they're so pretentious and like fucked up and awful and I think they're great characters and this is one of my favorite I won't tell you when or like who it happens with but dream sequences are hard to do this has a dream sequence in it that I loved I ate it up I was like wow that's literature. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a very long time since I read this, way before I even started my channel, but I, I love it. It's a modern classic, you know. I might say classic, it's, I don't know if this class is a classic, but I meant it is, and like, ah, oh, that's classic, that's classic. It's classic, you know what I mean? A classic? Classic, not debatable, not up for debate. You know, it is a bit intimidating, it's 600 pages long, but it's got this like, aura about it that I don't think anything else has really touched. So it's been a long time since I read it, but I do really recommend it. Then we have got the fantasy. We've got some other fantastical ones on this list, but this is like the, I don't know. I think other the other fantasies that I love, even maybe I prefer to this, but I don't think of them as like the fantasy. I think this is the fantasy dark academia. And that is Ninth House and Hellbent. I, and when I saw these on my shelf, I take the dust jacket off. All of my Lee Bardugo ones have the, just the spines. I love Ninth House. I recently read Hellbent last month and I enjoyed it. I didn't, you know, it was like a four star, but Ninth House is like five star, five star, five star plus. We are following Alex Stern, who is recruited to go to Yale and and kind of like watch over the secret societies there who all deal in magic. So they're all doing, again, like fucked up shit. <laughs> and it's up to her to kind of um, go to their like, I don't know the word, I forgot what the word is, but like, you know, where they do magical stuff and make sure they're not doing anything wrong. But then a murder happens on campus and so she starts investigating that. We have ghosts, we have 
other mm, paranormal things <laughs> in the later books and I love it. To me, this is like peak Lee Bardugo. I'm like, Lee, just carry on writing this. Honestly, it was supposed to be like seven books and now it's only a trilogy. Not very happy about that. <laughs> but I love the writing. I think Yale is a great dark academia setting. I think she really pulls on the setting to like bring bring the book to life. You know, you got those autumn leaves. Like the dark academia is like, it's right there. I love it. I love the Bodugo's writing. I love Alex Stone's character. I love Darlington. I love, I've forgotten her name. <laughs> Doors, I love Doors. And I just think she's really succeeded in making a series that it feels, you know, it's fantastical, but it's still dark academia and has a really good limit on the magic system, right? If anything with a, with a mystery element and magic, like you have to have a really constrained magic system so that you know the rules you're playing by. And I feel like she's done that really well. Then we have got the YA. I think this is my only YA recommendation. And that is the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson. Starts with Truly Devious. Then we have The Vanishing Stair. Then we have The Hand on the Wall. This is like the OG trilogy. I see this as like a contained series. And now she's coming out. I think there's been The Box in the Woods and Nine Liars, I want to say. But they're like, I see them as spin-offs to this original trilogy. So in this, we're at Ellingham Academy, a private, famous private school in Vermont. And it was founded by this rich dude and the idea is you bring really bright intelligent students there who like want to specialize in a particular subject and you give them like free reign to learn about their particular speciality but then um the creator of the school's wife and daughter were kidnapped many many years ago and stevie our main girly is like a true crime girl she like wants to solve true crime stuff particularly the ellingham mystery i've read quite a lot of ya dark academia and they often don't hit for me but i think I think this hits. I really love the setting, the, the school setting surrounded by these trees is really, really vivid. A part of Dark Academia for me is the setting, like does your setting encapture that vibe? And like there can be two books set at the same school almost and one will capture the vibe and one won't. I think the mystery that spans across all the books is actually really, really well done for a YA. If you're looking for YA, if you're looking to start Dark Academia but don't want to start somewhere too, I don't know, intimidating, this would be my recommendation. But I think this has a great atmosphere, it's not afraid to like murder people. Like sometimes YA thinks we can't have murder, yes you can. <laughs> yes you can and I just thought they're actually really well written so I really enjoyed these if you're looking for a YA recommendation this is my top one then we've got The Revenge this is more leaning thriller wise this is They Never Learn by Lane Fargo so in this we're following a teacher who murders shitty men basically <laughs> good for her this is kind of the story of is she gonna get away with what's happening. Like, is she gonna get away with killing all these people? Like, you're kind of like, yes, woman's wrong, because they're all really bad people that she's killing. But is she gonna get away with it? And then we're also following a young student who is at the school at the same time and kind of her interactions with shitty men in student culture. So you're kind of following both perspectives. And I love this. I really love this. I really, really love this. I just love women. <laughs> no, this is like a really, twisty thriller. It has some really, you know, shocking twists that really still stand out to me as being really well done. And again, I mean, look at the cover. Look at the cover. Is that not the vibes that we're looking for here? I mean, come on. <laughs> it's fun to have a murderer that you're rooting for. So often murder, murder mystery books that I read, if it's from like a detective's point of view, you're, you're rooting for them to take down the murderer. But in this, you are rooting <laughs> kind of for the murderer. I mean, not fully, but it's an interesting character to follow. And I think it really examines like, misogynistic culture in academia really really well from both of those perspectives that I mentioned so yeah this is like it'll leave you gagged mm. it's one of those books that has like a halfway twist that I love I oh I think about it all the time I love a good halfway twist that completely upends the book and like puts us on a different path so that's why I loved this then we have I called this the epic because I just think it's epic like I think it's gonna go down in history as another great and it's one of my favorites it is Babel by R.F. Kuang now I want to admit to you something Thomas started becoming a reader he just DNF'd this like 100 pages in I don't want to talk about it like I actually that's actually a problem it's been the worst week of my life, actually. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> if you don't know, this is one of my favorite books. It was my favorite book of last year. And we're following Robin, who goes to Oxford for translation. So this is fantastic again, but I feel like it's fantasy 
is a little bit more lighter note than Ninth House, if I had to pitch it, because sometimes you can forget. Like, the only fantastical element is silver working and translation. Like, you write, it's difficult to explain, but you write two words that, like, have the same meaning, but also separate connotations, and it will, like, power something. You write that on silver. <laughs> that makes sense. But really, this is a book about colonialism in the UK and how our systems and how our public institutions how, like things like universities are deeply entrenched in blood really and colonialism and I thought it was a fascinating look at that I absolutely loved it I've spoken about this like 10,000 times we don't need to, need to talk about it again but I really I just love it I just love our Kwong's writing in this it perhaps I've heard some people say it's a bit like heavy-handed and that it is I'm gonna admit that here it is but I don't mind that but I can see how other people wouldn't enjoy it but I love I mean enjoy that aspect of the book it's not, I'm really upset but it has footnotes I love the footnotes I need to read more books with footnotes because I just think footnotes I love them they're just an added little element of camp to me I just oof, I love a good footnote <laughs> I love Babel I think it is gonna go down in history as just incredible I mean I love it I love what it says I love the characters and the journey that they go on it's incredible we love Babel in this house and they're shot on Switching to one that I absolutely love, but no one else does, <laughs> The Misunderstood, Catherine House. Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Elizabeth Thomas, when are you gonna write another book? Because I need it, I will be there. I will be there first in the queue because I love Catherine House, okay? I love it, I love it. I don't, it's like one of the lowest rated books on Goodreads I've ever read. I don't get it, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> Everyone loves me. Well, the old bastard hates me, but they're just wrong. So, Catherine House is this school. It's a very prestigious school, which you go to and you have no contact with the outside world for three years. So that sounds like, okay, we're really focusing on our studies, but like, Catherine House is a bit fucked up. <laughs> and we've got a main character who is kind of like coasting through this all. She's a little bit disconnected from it. She's like trying to figure out what's going on, but also she just wants to live her life. And I think people don't like that. And I just love it. I just love it. It's like a descent into insanity. I love it. I love Catherine House. It's a little bit culty, okay? On the back it says, you are in the house and the house is in the woods. You are in the house and the house is in you. Oh gosh. <laughs> I just love it. I think it plays with this dark academia genre or subgenre so well. I think its atmosphere is incredible. The idea of being so, the way it's written is so interesting. I love it. I felt like I was in a dream reading this. It's so unique. It's so different. I believe she's misunderstood. I don't think it's is for everyone to read but I love it then we have got the documentary this is a mixed media one I did hesitate is this dark academia I think it is I think I'm just a bit fussy with my dark academia but this is a true crime story by Joseph Knox if you don't know this is a book about a young woman who went missing after a university party and like 10 years or so on I want to say the this documentary maker is doing interviews with her closest family and friends to try and piece together what happened so it is all told through just interviews. These are all just interviews of people. And there's a few like emails and photos and stuff, but it's predominantly interviews. I would recommend the audiobook for this. I really loved the audiobook for it. And I just think this is a really unique take on the dark academia genre again. This has some really good twists again. It has some really interesting ways that it plays with the mixed media and plays with, how do I say this without spoiling anything? Plays with the conventions of a book, right? E not even just a mixed media book, like a book in general, plays with the conventions and brings characters in that like wouldn't necessarily be characters. Like Joseph Knox, the author, is a character in this. And I just think that's such a fun way to play with the conventions. And at the end of the day, Dark Academia can be fun. We all love reading Dark Academia because it's kind of got like a f element of fun to it, right? Like it's fu it's dark, it's messed up, but at the end of the day, like it's, it's so, everything's so amplified in dark academia. Like in secret history, the people, their love for study academia or like the atmosphere is like intensified, like autumn leaves ramped up to a 10 on the trees. Do you know what I mean? And so I think this is, it plays with it in really fun and unique ways. Then we've got the flashback because this one only has dark academia in its flashbacks but it's the it girl by ruth ware i didn't love this this is probably one of my least favorite ruth wares but i always enjoy ruth ware but this is one of my least favorites because i don't love dual timelines and i did enjoy this once the flashback had ended however because they end about two-thirds the way in i would say but what i would say is that it's dark academia ness is very vivid and i think done well in this so we're following hannah who found her best friend's body 10 years ago when they i think they were oxford oxford or cambridge it's one of the uk 
biggins yeah it's oxford um so she found her body and then 10 years or so on she's starting to wonder whether or not the right person was uh, put away for her friend's murder because she was instrumental in blaming that person and saying that's the person who killed my best friend so i didn't love this as much as other ruth wears i think the ending though is really really strong and i think if you're wanting an oxford setting i mean we've got like Babel, but that's fantastical if you're wanting an oxford setting that's like a thriller this would be my recommendation and my final recommendation i have called let me let me consult the sheets hang on the it's a really solid version of dark academia but it's not necessarily unique <laughs> I think this is such a solid Dark Academia book, but it's not necessarily doing anything different. I think of it as like a natural continuation of books like The Secret History and If We Were Villains. Like it's very similar in its tropes and the way it plays out to them, but I think it's a very solid version with great writing. And that is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. So again, let me not get this plot confused. We've got six friends, one unsolved murder that happened when they were at school and they're at a college reunion. So it's very similar. Is it creative and unique? I'm genuinely curious. No. Something I did enjoy about the flashbacks in this, because again, it's got flashbacks to when they're at school, the present day is at the reunion. When they're at school, it jumps around in time. So it'll go from like year one to year three, to year two, to year four, to year three, to like, it will jump around in time to like, a relevant past moment that relates to something that's happening in the present at the reunion. And I thought that's a perfect, for me, that is a perfect way of doing split timeline because my problem is when they've got two timelines competing for dominance but that past timeline being not in a natural sequence shows that it's like supporting what's happening in the present timeline and I loved it. You guys know if you watched a vlog recently I didn't love The Last Housewife by Ashley Winstead but I loved this and I'm hoping that Last Housewife was just a blip for us <laughs> and I will go on to really enjoy um, Midnight is the Darkest Hour which is the one coming out this year but I just think this is like a very it does everything right. It For me, it does everything right that a dark academia murder mystery thriller needs to do. You know, it like hits it out of the park for me. <laughs> but I don't think it's doing anything that hasn't been done before. But I think if you've read those other books, I think this does a good job of paying, you know, respect to the conventions, but also not feeling like a copy. Like, it's very difficult to explain. But yeah, I would really recommend the writing of this. I remember I had such a fun time reading it. I think I read it in like October last year and that was a perfect setting. So yeah. I really recommend picking this up. It's solid at what it does. So there we have it, everyone. Now it's on my top Dark Academia recommendations. Let me know if you've read any of these, what you've thought. If you hated Catherine House, get out. No, <laughs> it's probably two thirds of you. No, um, let me know what you thought of any of these. And please let me know any other Dark Academia books that you'd recommend based on me enjoying these. Some I might have already read and just not included in this list because these are my top recommendations. But let me know some of your recommendations. I'd love to know if you got to the end of the video, comment a stack of books emoji. <laughs> and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!